little keyboard and he will accomplish things through a small still voice And he wants you to experience both. Because when you know the fullness of how he speaks to people, you'll be expecting at all times. Is Mila in the house? Lisa, if you can find Mila and check in with her. I felt she had an exhortation for this congregation so if she feels that I'm hearing correctly bring her out if not ask her to forgive me Shh. Shh. right now I think Pastor Dan has an exhortation if that's correct Pastor Dan a specific exhortation I know you're ready in season and out but if you don't have something that you really feel you're supposed to say, then don't say anything. I'm just checking in, okay? I'm just going to sing it. Um, the water level is rising. In the book of Ezekiel, it talks about the spirit of the Lord coming in. Where the, the water's rising, do you feel it? So we're just going to agree with that. We're going to receive this this song prayer right now. sacred moment right here I pray for all of us that if there's any familiarity with the fact that you get to be a child of God and don't value it to the degree that we need to that we consider it a privilege see the degree that you value your oneness with God determines how well you collaborate with him how sensitive you are to his direction. Jesus valued his father and only did what his father was showing him or saying to him. That's the goal right there. That's the vision. Not going to church, but being the church. Not going to church, but being to church being the church and and you can't be the church without going to church because God said don't forsake the assembling of the saints so it's part of the equation 
if there's anybody here that feels that me and Pastor Dan or my wife is supposed to pray for you, then you need to make sure that we know that before I switch gears.
showed me that there's a massive war right now there's a spirit of darkness that's trying to overtake your life that's trying to overtake your family that's over to trying to overtake this ministry and I just want to rebuke that spirit of darkness right now in Jesus name father any spirit of witchcraft God any spirit of darkness that would try to hover in this place God that would try to hover in our families God that would try to hover over our marriages God I ask you to break it off right now Jesus Father, let your spirit reign in this place, God, like never before, God. I ask you to break chains right now, Father, off of lives, God. Spirit of addiction, you must go. Spirit of torment, you must go. Spirit of fear, you must go. Spirit of anxiety, you must go. Spirit of anger, spirit of rage. Father, I break it off right now, God. I break it off your people, God. I break it off this place, God. I break it off our families, God. I break it off this region, Father God, that New England would be known for you, Jesus, that they would be known in the day, like in the days of old, God, for revival, God. I ask you to bring your revival spirit back in this place, God, back into New England, Father God, that Springfield, Massachusetts would not be dark anymore, God, but that your light, God, would hover all over Springfield, God. I ask you, God, to touch hearts right now, God. Hearts that are broken, God. Hearts that are suffering, God. Spirit of suicide, I break it off right now. Jesus, I thank you for what you're doing here today, God. I thank you it's not an accident, that nothing you do is an accident, God. Father, help your people know you, God. Help your people cry out in prayer, God. Give them a new hunger. Give them a new hunger. Give us a new hunger. Give us a new hunger. Give us a new hunger for you. supernatural for a reason because there's power 
supernatural. And if you know Jesus, if you've accepted him in your heart, then you have that same power. So guys, I'm calling you to arrive and awaken and be the body you called to be. It's time to not be silent. People are dying. People are committing suicide. And we need to be the voice. We need to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. John where it talked about the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life and I hear here's something let me let me pause something that the world promotes is self-confidence you don't want self-confidence you don't ever want to be in the place, ever want to be in the place that you don't think you need God. The story in the Bible are two men come to the altar and one is desperate. He knows his wretched self. And the other one comes to the altar and says, I'm okay. Guess who received from God? The one that surrendered, that was humble and said, God, if there's something like David, if there's anything evil in my heart, remove it. That's the posture for a disciple. A lifestyle of God, I want to be so right with you that I squeak. That's how clean I want my heart to be. That I'm so right with you. Like Stephen when he's getting stoned and had all the reasons to complain and whine and justify a bad attitude. Says, Father, forgive them. And Jesus, it says in scripture, 
it gets Jesus attention you want to get Jesus attention like the faith of centurion that got Jesus attention because the centurion was de demonstrating faith not to feel good about ourselves just to give God what he deserves a wholehearted surrendered 24 7 seeking God no self-righteousness God I need you every second of every day that's the goal because that's the way Jesus lived Wow I am so glad that I came today does anybody feel like we're supposed to pray for the praise and worship team pastor Dan all right, stand to your feet. Tell them to be quiet. In all seriousness, ministers joke about the musicians. You can stop playing the keyboard, son. Thank you. That the greatest problems in ministry come from the praise and worship team. Why do you think that is? Because the enemy lost his position as praise and worship leader, and he regrets it. Plus, if you have true servants on the praise and worship team, I think I'm a little hot, Jonathan. Then God's going to get the glory. You're going to experience his presence, and works of darkness are in trouble. So he'll just... He'll go after the pastor, his wife, or vice versa, whoever is lead servant. He'll go after the marriage, the tip. He'll go after his family. He'll go after the inner circle. He'll go after the praise and worship team. That's the way it works. Because he wants to create division because he knows what Jesus said. If a house is divided against itself, it will fall. I need their help. I need my wife's help. I need everybody's help to not be divided in this house so it brings glory to God the way it's supposed to be. And that's all of our responsibility because what you're saying outside of this place is either causing a gluing, collaborating effect of the Spirit of God or a work of division. Jesus said you're either gather gathering by your lifestyle, what you're saying, or you're scattering. Say, Father in heaven, help me be more than a believer, a disciple that lives very sober and very alert to what you're saying. Help me walk in a privileged mindset that I get to walk and talk with you every day. That I have the smartest mentor with me 24-7. Help me hunger and thirst for you more and more every day. That nothing on this world, in this world, on this world, of this world, in my past, in my present, controls me more than you. Nobody's behavior, no mammon, nothing. Let that be a reality in my life. Okay, from that consecrated place, I believe that you prayed that from a... Uh, true heart condition. I don't think it was a rhetoric or tradition. I truly believe that those that are here today, which I honor with all my heart for your courage to go the opposite way of the flesh this morning, that that prayer is going to reap tremendous fruit in your life. So from that consecrated place, could you by faith just, Jesus, it says Jesus raised his hands and he prayed. So could we follow the the pattern of our master 
Dan, Lisa, could you go ahead and lay hands as I pray on the praise and worship team? Kathy, Mary, prayer team. Could you now pray for the praise and worship team? Congregation, could we just pray a, 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 a umbrella prayer as they're getting individual prayer right now? Father, let a new grace, a fresh grace, and a new shalom come upon these musical servants, these psalmists, to protect them, to give them revelation that they need, help them never, never become self-confident, but increase them in a new confidence in you and your leadership and trusting you and relying on you so you can use them, Father, whether they're singing or playing. And in every area of their life, Father, I ask that you would give them an upgrade that you know that they need to be and do what you've called them to be and do. I pray for every single one in this congregation, and if the video is going, everyone that's watching, for every flavor of God's favor, as you humble yourself to Him, the Spirit of God says, I'll give you new grace, new divine empowerment to be and do. I pray that as you demonstrate that humility today and every day, that you would walk in a fresh grace that causes an impact in your life and an impact through your life that you have never experienced in your life. really strongly that the Lord is going to mark. This day has been marked for you, May 1st. You're going to come back and you're going to remember it and you're going to say, gosh, things are different. Things are different. I wonder what happened. And the Holy Spirit will bring back to you May 1st. May 1st. Whether you came up for ministry or not, May 1st is significant for you because the Lord has turned a page in your life and something new has been imparted to you. So you want to keep thanking him for that. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in my life. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your goodness to me. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. What an awesome picture. I love the body ministering to the body. Amen. Well, as they finish in prayer, Hannah, if you could come down and get the slide ready. You all may be seated. We're going to close with a couple instructions.
We live in a microwave culture. We have to be super sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Are we being controlled by the culture we live in, which is microwave, instantaneous, fast? Do we, are we in pace with the Holy Spirit? Am I going the speed I'm supposed to be going? There's times the Holy Spirit say, come on, you've got to pick up the pace now. And there's times he's going to say, okay, now slow down. It's like driving a car with my wife. She's always helping me be lawful instead of lawless. And that's a gift. I used to resent it, now I rejoice. It's taken me way too long. That's why you need to pray for me, because I want to grow as fast as God wants me to grow. Okay, can we graciously increase the lighting? Not a bam. We need the slides. Forgive me. Don't bring up the lights. I told you I needed her. Here's something you can do when somebody else is being used to pray for somebody, you can be part of the backup singers, like there's backup singers, and you can say, get them good, God. Just say, get them good, God. Every single person on the sideline is just as important as the person in the game. You have to be just as ready to get in there because someone in the game may come out and you're called to go in. So if you're not part of the game on the sidelines, you're not going to be ready when you get called in. And we all need to be ready in season and out of season when we're being called onto the field and when we're not. No one has been forsaken or forgotten. Everyone is valuable. I personally believe I'm a liver in the body of Christ. And the liver is pretty dejected and rejected in the natural. It's like if you said, you know, I'm the body of Christ and I'm the liver, the liver does a cleansing. Okay? So even if you think you're a little toe or the liver like me, you're still valuable. Okay? Can we give God a hand clap right now? Thank you, everyone. Hannah, I'm so proud of you. Would you like a podium? No, I'm okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow, I feel like that was an amazing service. And so let's give God a hand. Um, I definitely feel moved right now from seeing everybody um, just really go after God. It's really, it's really moving to me. And I just wanted to express that before I express anything else that I, I'm grateful that I was here today <laughs> and that, you know, sometimes services don't look always traditional. <laughs> um, and I think that's something that's really good here, that it's not always, you don't know what you can expect every time you come here. Even just working in the office, always good, always good, always good. absolutely. But even in the office, I never know what to expect. <laughs> we have like all the construction people coming in for the wall, thanks. Um, you know, there's always somebody here. I, I walked up with fire trucks, they were doing the inspections. I was like, oh my gosh, can I go in here? Like, is it safe? <laughs> it's safe, don't worry. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's one thing I really do love about this church and about the pastors and about everybody here, is that it really is a family and a community and a great place to be, to fill your heart up and go out into your week and really feel like you got something from coming here. So I just wanted to, you know, just say that first. Um, <laughs> so yeah, on another note with where we're heading right now, uh, as some of you may know, Pastor D and I, well, she wrote the book, I helped design it. So uh, it's called The Clarity Toolbox, and it's including all of her profiles that she's created over the years. Um, and has made available to you guys. So if you guys have any testimonies, we want to include it in the book. Um, we have these little slips where you can put your first name, last initial, and then testimony of use of the profile. So if you learned about yourself through the love language profile, if you, you know, 
we're better able to connect with someone that you love because you now understand the language in which they understand or they speak their love. So definitely, uh, I think that some of the ushers have these. So if you just have a testimony, uh, just raise your hand and he will hand you one of those. Um. And Pastor D, where can they give these when they're done filling them out? Okay, so um, these are not immediately needed right this second, but if you can get them done today or by next Sunday, that would be lovely. Today. today. <laughs> yes, today, sure. There's gonna be something tomorrow that the Holy Yeah, yeah, so let's, let's just make a priority. It'll take, what, a minute maybe, so. Uh, out in the Life Center, just put them, uh, put them down there, and then we can collect them. Um, secondly, I have another slide. This is about giving. I uh, just wanted to give a couple giving reminders. Um, so, Maya, whenever you get a chance, the next slide. All right, guys, we, we want you to be prophetic in praise, and this works really well for today. This really does, <laughs> but precise in writing on the envelopes. <laughs> this is not coming from like condemnation of like, you need to change your handwriting, it sucks. <laughs> it's fine, <laughs> don't worry, it's not like that. We just, uh, <laughs> Kathy and I were talking about um, <laughs> about <laughs> being able to interpret and like, the gift of interpretation. And I feel like it's funny because we were kind of joking around. I was like, how should I word this? I don't want it to come across like a certain way. And she's like, oh yeah. Um, you know, we have the gift of interpretation, but not that good. So keep praying for us. But also, if you can help us out, just, just, oh, next slide, next slide. <laughs> This, this was a funny thing I did. <laughs> this is what we don't want. Um, and yeah, that's just a joke. All right. <laughs> um, and then I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the next one, um, these are all, this is all about giving. So the envelopes, first name and last name. Uh, we just got, I made another joke, haha. Uh -huh. God wants to, God knows you by name and we want you to. Um, <laughs> So just write the first and last name on the envelope, write it clearly just to make our jobs a little bit easier in the office. Um, memo's the way to go. So when you're doing a specified offering, um, that's when there's nothing else listed on the page that you want to give to. So um, like for example, the wall, we had that, or the spring forward. Um, just make sure to put it in the memo, um, what you want it to go to. Uh, and make sure it's up to, de up to date weekly, because I know some weeks you might forget to change the memo if it's like a reoccurring giving. So that's just a reminder. Uh, the last one is giving directly to the fund of choice. So if you see Spring Forward, just go to Spring Forward. If you have you know, a tithe, just give to tithing, so it goes directly into that account. That just makes it easier, but if you have to split, um, just specify how much you want in each fund. So if you're giving for your offering, but you want something to go to something else, for example, $100 for the offering and then $50 for Spring Forward, just so that we know the exact amount that you want. Give into the direct fund, because we don't want to play guessing games. Uh, we just want to be extremely clear with where you want you know, your uh, you know, money to go. So, so yeah, I think that's all, just click Yes, we love you guys. <laughs> and I want to say, as the lead servant here, a big thank you for everyone that supports financially because we wouldn't be here today unless you cooperated and collaborated with the Holy Spirit and trusted him that his leadership in your giving is going to make a big difference. I went to the uh, hairstylist yesterday, and I had a $100 bill that someone gave me for, as a gift. I took it out of the envelope, and I said, oh, I don't think that's not what I usually tip her. <laughs> but <laughs> Tradition, say tradition. 
This is why sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, listen to what happens. I put it in my pocket thinking I would get changed somewhere, and I felt the Holy Spirit, the small, still voice say, I want you to give her the whole $100. She fell down on the ice two months ago. She's been out of work, and she is hurting financially. So I paused, like a lot of you. Are you sure? <laughs> that was a gift to me that I was planning to use for something else. Okay, I'm no different than you. I'm human. I have the same thoughts. I can be bombarded by the same fears and the same constricting voices. But I really felt it was the Holy Spirit. And so halfway, actually we ended up halfway through the appointment, I had a release. For some reason, the door opened to give it to her. She almost fell on the floor in tears. Now, this woman is not a, she's kind of a, not like that at all, totally the opposite. She started crying, had to hold on to the counter because her knees went weak. That's how much you collaborating with the Holy Spirit makes a difference, whether people show it like that or not. But that's the feeling me and my wife get when you say yes to God, hear the exhortation, and listen and follow through. That's the impact that you can have and God wants you to have. Amen. So just really quick. So I'm going to talk about our, one of our core values. We have several. They're in our, the little pamphlet out there that talks about live streams. So one of our core values is, and this is my personal favorite, we lead in the way of being extravagant givers. Okay? So I'm very excited because we're coming up... Uh, with a this called the Good Samaritan Purse, okay? And so what there's always going to be a need. So you have to kind of tweak your thinking if you think that needs are going to come to an end until Jesus comes back. They're not. And so there's always going to be a need, but we get to meet them. Amen. So there's, there's joy in that. And so now this is, remember, first things first, your offerings, your tithes, your giving goes to the church. And the reason is for that is because if you like coming here and experiencing God, there's certain things that we have to meet, such as lights and air conditioning and just the upkeep of the building. So please, 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 that is first and foremost, and that's where you start. So if you've never started anywhere, you really, that should be your step one starting block. If it's too much... To, I mean, really, the 10% is just really a starting point. But if you can't get there, God doesn't matter if you start slow and build your faith. So just be consistent. Just start, and, and God will show his faithfulness to you. So that's, that's the first building block. So I'm talking about the second building block. We're going to step two, and that is the Good Samaritan's Purse. So what is that? What we are trying to do here is we want to stretch you, but it's a very attainable goal and we just want you to consider contributing an extra dollar, or it could be more, but I'm starting slow, an extra dollar every week that goes to the Samaritan Purse. What is the Samaritan Purse? Well, you'll see right out the door, we started it. <laughs> Me and Pastor D didn't even talk today. And I go, I have this thing in my gut. And she goes, did you see out there? And I go, no. And, and, and so the Spirit of God is talking to us, and she has four bins out there. We're going to start collecting canned goods. Uh, 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 it's what's out there, dry goods. So, again, if you're going to the grocery store, and there's, you know, Big Y always has their sales, you know, buy two, get two. I don't need four boxes of macaroni. I'll bring two, you know what I mean? So just be open to that, and we're going to be forming a committee that uh, is going to meet, and it's for the needs of the people in the house and things like that. So again, this is your giving to the church first and then the Samaritan's purse. So if, and this is a good um, practice, so if you wanted to do that today, when you go in on the app, like Hannah said, you would just put it in the memo. Okay? And just remember, if next week you don't want to do that, you have to change the memo. Did I get it? I got it. All right. <laughs> so we are going to praise the Lord right now. And it is a praise. 
Remember, we lead the way in being extravagant givers. You should be known as an extravagant giver. Danny Perugio, oh yeah, you have a need? Go to Danny Perugio. He has an anointing for finances. Amen. Because we're here to meet the need. So, and that's a good thing. Amen. So we thank you, Father. We pray over this. Father, we thank you first things first. And we choose to honor you and praise you and give back to you, which you have so lavishly given us this week, O oh Lord God. And that you would only ask for such a little amount and you give us so much. So, Father, we first and foremost put that in front and we pray, Lord God, that you would bless it and, uh, and multiply our need in Jesus' name. And, Father, help me, help us to be extravagant givers to stretch our faith, O oh Lord, each week, to knowing that you would meet us wherever we go. In Jesus' name, I pray over this bless, this offering. I thank you for it. I thank you for life. I thank you for life stream. And I thank you for the people here. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. They're going to get the kids. I have a couple more announcements for you. First of all, it's birthday Sunday. There's great treats down there. So uh, we don't want you to miss out. And I've been so excited because uh, actually, oh, I don't see right now, Christina, we were doing some healthy snacks. So we have fruit and vegetables today as well as cake. Yes. So no excuse for not going down there. You can't say, well, it's something I don't eat, right? So come down and uh, enjoy the fellowship. Also, there's lots of new things on the app for the month of May, so I want you to uh, see what's on that, check out the app. If you don't have our app, get the live stream app and you'll have all the announcements. It is not only birthday Sunday, as I said, um, it is uh, May Day and it was the day that we started. Here they come, the Samaritan's Fun. So that is in the hallway for future use. Anything you want to bring that's a a non-perishable would be great to put in there. Whether we have a need right now or a need that will be coming, we want to make sure that we begin a storehouse uh, for the Lord. And last but not least, women's luncheon is two weeks from today, so I need a head count. And if you are coming or if you're bringing someone, you can't come, you can be an usher. Uh, please sign up at the counter, the Life Center counter, so we have an accurate count for the caterer. It's $10. We want to honor Christina's house and the moms there and any guests that they want to bring, so please come and be a blessing to them. I know we went a little later today. Give me some mic. I know we went a little later today, um, but that's because God is in the house. Amen? Amen? All right. So when we go later and there's announcements, don't check out because announcements are really important. There's two people that missed the anointed, amazing men's breakfast yesterday because they didn't know about it. Uh, so if you don't have the app, see Hannah. Hannah, see Hannah. She'll show you how to download the app because that has all the notifications and all the messages. You never have to not know. Right. I don't know about you, but I love knowing. I hate not knowing. So get the app, pay attention to the announcements because one of my passions is that no one misses out on the goodness of God, okay? So let's, let's have that same heart. Bill, let's seal the deal. Come no, on. No, no, no. What? It's birthday Sunday, Oh, jeez. See that? 
I'm going too yes, fast. Yes, you are. Just lift one hand. <laughs> Say, God, help him. <laughs> Please. Please. Amen. <laughs> if you were born in the month of May, we want to bless you. Come on down. We want to sing to you. Oh, Christian. Oh.